the Gophers head coach Hugh McCutcheon, also Taylor Landfair and Barrow defensive specialist Cece McGraw. Sure. Thanks for being here. Just know how grateful we are to be a part of this inaugural event and uh, excited for another great season of Big Ten Volleyball. That will open up for questions. N not all at once. Please. Please. <laughs> we find Swap from volleyballmag.com. You, could you give us sort of a loose, loosely formed depth chart of the positions for your team? Yeah, uh, I, I would be speculating at best, Lee. We, we, we are so fortunate to have a lot of depth and talent on this team. And um, this preseason is going to be critical in terms of establishing the, the very things you're speaking to, you know, lineups and, and depth charts. But, but uh, you know, for me to put it out there at this point would seem a little reckless. Um, we've got some good returners. Um, but one of the things we absolutely live by is we don't promise anyone starting jobs. We don't promise anyone playing time. We just promise everybody that we're going to invest in their development. So um, I think that stuff will play itself out. And I'd, I'd even go as far as to say that it could be a kind of an evolving thing over the course of the season as, as different players continue to grow and evolve. So uh, I would uh, respectfully decline to give you the depth chart. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah. As also, I would expect. Yes. Daniel Gilman with six rotations for CC. You spent now a good amount of time dealing with off seasons. In your opinion, do you feel like there's a good amount of time spent with the coaches before a season starts, or do you think that all of this hubbub in the off season feels like it deserves a little bit more time with the coaches? Yeah, I think we'd obviously want more time with the coaches. Every opportunity we can get to get in the gym and learn. Um, Obviously, like we do a lot of stuff on our own in the summer, and we have captain's practices and stuff, but there's only so much we can do. Um, so like when it comes to coach, coaches' feedback and whatnot, for the newcomers, like that's way more impactful. So yeah, I'd say we'd hope that we could get more time, but I'm really, um, I think we're in a good spot right now, headed into preseason. Uh, John Adias, Badger Sports Network. Hugh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the partnership with the Big Ten Network and Volleyball World. Kelly Sheffield was just in here talking about, you know, how that could impact recruiting internationally. And with your international background, I'm wondering how you feel that partnership could open up things um, specifically in the Big Ten. Yeah, I'm not sure about the, the synergies on the recruiting front. But, but all of that aside, not, not to say that those won't be a thing. I mean, who knows? But the idea that uh, that Big Ten Volleyball in particular can, can be presented on this global platform, on, on a global stage, is I think really important for, for volleyball world and for our sport in this country because I think the, the perception internationally is that we don't have a professional league per se, but when you look at the, the facilities and the investment and the crowds and the, the energy around our sport in this conference in particular, uh, you know, it rivals certainly anything that's going on in any other country. So I think it's going to be great for the world to see what college volleyball is, well, in particular Big Ten volleyball is. And, and you know, I think it's important that, um, you know, maybe, maybe that drives more people to watch Volleyball World TV and see that there's a ton of really good volleyball going on all over the world in a d bunch of different countries as well. So I think there's this really good synergy that, that could be created by this partnership. I think it's really important and impactful. Um, your former player, uh, Stephanie, is playing on Perugia Italian yeah. mm -hmm. A1 League. Uh, the ranked 10th preseason. How do you think she'll be able to handle, you know, that league on that team? And you know, what do you think she could bring to a team that's at the bottom of the league? Well, I have a lot of faith in Stephanie, um, and I, I think she really made a smart decision to to start her professional career playing in in Germany. I mean, not to say that the Bundesliga isn't good, but but it, it was a, a nice transitional few months, get used to being in Europe, get used to that whole deal of being a pro versus playing collegiately. And um, yeah, I, I think she's, she's, gonna be, uh, she's gonna be ready to go. One of the things that's great about Stephanie relative to the, 
the shift into the international realm is she can play the whole game as an opposite that's compelling. You know, she hits a good serve in the court. She can play defense. She can hit front row, back row. She's got range. She's a good right side blocker. Um, so I think there's a lot of value she can add. Now, whether she can carry the load and, and you know, shift the needle to Perugia a ton, who knows? But, uh, you yeah, know, I, I don't mind backing her. I'd put some money on her. She's, she can play. I have a question on Zoom for Coach. Uh, where were you when you heard the news that UCLA and USC were joining the Big Ten? And how do you think the addition of those two teams will impact an already competitive conference? Uh, I'm not sure where I was. I think just probably hanging out at home. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, an, a very interesting and important evolution in terms of college athletics. As we know, the landscape of the college athletics world is is kind of getting reshaped, reformed. Uh, whatever you want to call it. And um, as Oklahoma and Texas kind of made their move, here's the Big Ten responding. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, a really impressive decision um, based on all the factors that are going into this, the, the TV market footprint, the quality of uh, the academic rigor of those institutions, the quality of the sporting programs they provide. And I think it's a really good fit. So, yeah, we're excited to have them join, and, and who knows how it's all going to play out. But uh, really cool that, that uh, Big Ten's getting bigger. Next question, Pete. Uh, Peter Furrier, Big Ten Plus. For Taylor and CC, another big recruiting class coming in, a lot of transfers as well. What have you two done in this offseason, especially to embrace all those new players and know that you're going to be another uh, favorite in the Big, in the big Ten? Well, I personally think that we've all just come together as a team and just really took in those people that came in and just making sure that they all feel like they have a voice and making sure that we all gelled well, really well as a team because what goes on the, off the court actually comes on onto the court. So I think building chemistry, making sure we have a lot of trust within each other, making sure that our competitive drive is up where it needs to be, making sure our standards are where they're supposed to be at too. Got another question on Zoom. This one um, for Cece. How do you view this year's roster in relationship with some of the other teams that you play for with the Gophers? It seems like there's a nice balance of returning players to go along with the freshman class and the transfer. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, our freshman class and a lot of our newcomers and transfers are definitely going to add a lot of depth to our um, roster, which is great. I think in years past, we haven't had as much depth, so I think that'll be a big shift for us this season. Um, a lot of moving parts and people that can play multiple positions, so I think that'll be a strength of ours. So I'm really looking forward to getting in the gym and working with the new players and just um, we're focusing on connecting on and off the court and making sure we're on the same page with our goals for the season. Taylor, you went to Selma, right? Mm -hmm. And can you talk maybe about what that experience was like and what it meant to you, but also maybe you became friends with Amaya and Raynell that you might not have been previously, what that might mean playing against them during the season or anything like that? Yeah, for anything sure. Anything you want to? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I just think my experience is really incredible because I understood what happened back then and to some extent, I kind of just knew the surface layer of things that, that actually happened back then. But being able to actually understand and learn and read about everything that actually happened in depth, I think was an amazing experience just because I think more people need to understand what happened because I feel like nothing's really talked about in schools and I feel like more people need to be able to actually experience what happened and be able to read every single story and everything that actually happened just because it's, it's really the amount of emotions that came with it was incredible to me. And like there were so many tears, there was so much frustration, anger, all the different emo emotions that you could possibly feel were felt. And I think that it was just an amazing experience and I would definitely love to do it again. I definitely would love to take my family down there. And anybody that has the ability to actually go down there, I think it would be amazing for you to actually travel and just see what happens. And also in terms of being able to play, I think it would be cool just to be able to see the players that were there, just to see them across the net and be like, hey, I'm with you, like we're in this together. We're both going through the exact same thing that all of our ancestors went through. And so just being able to fight through that has been really important to me. Uh, Ethan Casales, Big Nittany Volleyball. For the players, what does it mean to you to be a role model for the next generation of volleyball players and have young fans come up to you after matches? Cece, start with you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think playing at this level, I mean, you definitely have the ability to influence a lot of young athletes. And so I think most importantly, just teaching them how to be a good teammate and really modeling that on the court. I think doing what you can to help those around you in any way possible, like regardless of how well you do and your abilities, I think it's most important to, as a role model, to set that example um, for young female athletes to work hard, learn, get better, and just ultimately be a good person. And I don't know, 
I think the way we play and go about it at our program, it speaks volumes. Yeah. Coach, another question for you on Zoom. Uh, you've always played a tough, very tough non-conference schedule. Is this your toughest one yet? And how do you think it will prepare you for the Big Ten? Uh, before that, um, did you want to respond to that? W was it for both athletes? I, I don't know. If, yeah. oh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Oh. I would just say probably to those younger athletes, just letting them know that they can be a person and their whole world doesn't have to center around volleyball. You know, if they can just shoot for the stars, go whatever they want to. Just dream big. There you go. Um, to your question, yeah. It, it's uh, a robust schedule, no question. So uh, we'll, we'll learn a lot and, um, you know, and go from there. But, but I've always found that knowing how rigorous the big is going to be uh, you know, kind of tiptoeing around preseason, I don't think does you any good. I, I, you know, if we've got spaces in our game, I'd rather find out early. And, and, you know, the goal is to be the best we can be in December. And if we happen to be good in August and September, then cool, <laughs> you know. But, but the goal is to learn and, and, um, and then, you know, compete and try to get ready for what we know is going to be a really tough conference schedule. Other questions in there? Yep. Lincoln, are you on Harold Taylor, what's it? I mean, sorry. How much are you itching to get back on the court? And what's the past year been like? What are some challenges you've had to overcome? And what, what are you looking forward to about getting back on the court and competing? I'm just really excited to be back with my teammates, actually physically on the court. I feel like last year I really took the advantage of becoming a better teammate. And I know that I couldn't be out with my teammates on the court physically, but I knew that I could be with them on the sideline and giving them as much energy as I could, screaming my head off, just having, the bl like just having a blast on the sideline. And I think just coming into this year, I also want to do the exact same thing, making sure that I'm a great leader, being a great teammate, and just letting my teammates know that I'm there for them always, 100%, no matter what. Even if I do get injured, I'm there for you. Other questions here? Yeah. Coach, what are your thoughts on Russ Rose retiring and Katie schumacher Colley taking over at Penn State? Yeah, obviously the end of a, 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 a legacy career. You know, I, what, what was it, 44? Is that how many? 43. 43? Um, uh, I mean, that's uh, incredible on so many levels. And, you know, a sustained level of competitive success that's likely to be unrivaled. And so, yeah, R Russ's influence on our sport, and especially on Big Ten Volleyball, cannot be understated. You've got to – you've got to – appreciate and value this lifelong contribution he made to to this and we're all I mean we all stand on the shoulders of those those that came before us but you know Russ was a big part of building all of this um, and to that end you know I think hiring Katie was a really good decision she's knowledgeable she was with Russ for the last few years so you know in terms of knowing the, the lay of the land the, the status quo with the program I think it's a, a seamless transition, and um, you know we know they're just going to continue to keep rolling. But um, yeah, good hire for them, and um, obviously we're sad to see Russ go. But after 43 years, he's probably earned the right to go do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> yeah. Got another question on Zoom. This one CC for you. Uh, how tough was your decision to come back for one more year, and what were the biggest factors in coming? Honestly, it wasn't that tough. I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Right as I found out that we could get another year of eligibility, I was like, perfect. I can start grad school and get a program under my belt. Um, and just getting another opportunity to learn from Hugh and the rest of the staff and be around my teammates. I think my junior year, I missed out on a big chunk of the season. And so part of me was like, you know, I, I want to be back and healthy and myself again. So having one final run at it with my teammates and my amazing coaching staff and stuff was definitely the biggest thing for me. Follow-up question on that real quick uh, for Coach. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out CC was coming back for another year? And yeah. also, what have you seen for Taylor as she's navigated rehabbing her difficult injury and how do you view her role with the team? Yeah, really happy with CC's decision. Um, I, I think for us, it was kind of a no-brainer as well. It felt like a win-win, so it wasn't a long conversation. Um, you know, as for Taylor, I think that this little blip in her journey, this this injury, um, as as untimely and difficult as as especially ab injuries can be, um, I do think there was some opportunity for her in that, and she's spoken to that already. But you know, we're talking about someone that that probably never came off the court ever in her career. And, and here, now all of a sudden, how do you be on a team when you're not out there you know, making every play? And, and yet Taylor, uh, to her credit, found a ton of different ways to add value and to, to build the team and to support the team. 
And I think having that kind of empathy for what it is to be on the bench is going to help her to be a better when she's out on the court. So I, I know it wasn't cool to get hurt, um, but I do think there was some valuable lessons learned, and, and um, I think that's going to hold her in good stead. So we're excited to have her back out there. We've got a lot of questions coming in on Zoom. Taylor, this one's for you. You came to campus with Melanie and Jenna and then dealt with the pandemic and being injured. Is there a part of this season that feels like it's finally getting back to normal for you? And what do you expect from yourself as well as those two this season? Um, I think personally, just being able to be in the atmosphere of the PAV is definitely going to be one of my top things. I think just competing in the PAV with all the fans and so much energy and all the excitement. And then with Melanie and Jenna, I think all of us were in all of this together. And I think that we're all start we already have this bond together. So I think just kind of building on that and just bringing that onto the court will help us a lot. Other questions, folks in the room? Yep. The players, what do you love most about playing volleyball and just being at Minnesota in general? Yeah, I mean, it's a team sport. That's what I love most about it, you know. Um, I think the relationships I've built with my teammates and stuff throughout all these years um, wouldn't change anything for the world. So I think that's been the biggest thing. And um, Minnesota, I mean, I live 30 minutes from campus, so. I knew I wanted to stay close to home and have all my family members at all my matches and stuff there to support me. So um, obviously being close to home, but just getting to wear the M on my jersey and represent my home state and play for an incredible, um, incredible program and great coaches. I don't know. I'm so grateful that I've had all these opportunities and experiences with this sport. I would completely agree with CC. I think just knowing that me and my teammates are always there for each other. We're always our ride or dies no matter what happens. And I also think that being able to represent my last name because I'm not from Minnesota, so just being able to wear the M, just like Cece said, and just represent my family and my last name and just let my parents know that they raised me right and everything that they gave me, I've been using it to take it into my advantage because I just, I have to. Got time for a couple more questions, folks, in the room if you have them. Cece, does this feel like a single-minded focus on winning a championship, especially being in your home state? Oh yeah, hands down. I think that's everyone's goal, um, but especially this being my last hurrah, like I'm going all out, like and being like myself again and healthy uh, mentally and physically. I mean, I just want to win some games and compete and play against, play with my teammates and stuff. And I don't know, it's all or nothing. So yeah, I'd say that's definitely my approach this season. And coach, how much are you going to be depending on Taylor, especially without having Stephanie to kind of carry that load offensively and, and seeing her take the next step in, in her college career? Well, I think we'll we'll certainly lean on on Taylor, but I think one of the uh, the opportunities that this current iteration of our team presents us is is a lot of balance, and so I think um, not not that we were somehow you know, unidimensional before, but um, it feels like there's a lot of different ways we can attack teams. And uh, I think having that, that balance is going to be something that we're going to really try to play to. Got one last question on the Zoom uh, for both of the players. Is it daunting or exciting to get ready to play this kind of a non-conference and a conference schedule? Taylor, we'll start with you. I think it's definitely exciting. I'm super excited just because we don't get to see those teams all the time. And just being able to play them at a different time in the season, I think, is super exciting. I'm so excited. I can't wait for it, honestly. <laughs> I mean, after four years, I'd say, I, I mean, we usually like to load up our preseason, so it isn't anything new for us. Um, but I think it helps us down the road. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to just play, getting to play some good competitive volleyball and um, all those road matches in preseason in Texas. Like, it's just going to be some good, fun volleyball where you can learn and get better. Any other questions here in the room? Yeah, I'm glad because this never gets old with the Minnesota players. You can thank me later, Hugh. Mm. Cece, things that Hugh says that make you laugh, and he doesn't necessarily mean to make you laugh. Give me one or two. Um, I would say anytime you know he's giving us feedback or something, he'll always be like, oh, but you're still a good person. <laughs> like, that's usually, <laughs> he loves that one. You're like, oh, thanks, Hugh. Like, you're so kind. That's usually one of the, <laughs> yeah. We just don't want him to take it personally. It's just, <laughs> hey, you're a good person. We like you, but you have this little inefficiency, and we need to correct it. That's all. Yeah. And on that note, Coach, players, thank you so much today.
staying with us. Very Thank good. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you in six weeks, eh? Yeah, cheers. Okay.